Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled How to use satellite imagery to visualize changes in landscapes and how those changes can help you chronolocate an event. Before we start, I just want to say that first I will read the entire article and then I'll show you in practice how to do it because I realized that going back and forth was quite a mess. Okay, so it is absolutely phenomenal knowing that we live in a time where anyone with an internet connection can easily gain access for free to satellite imagery gathered from satellites orbiting Earth. Every day, millions of images are collected, capturing every nook and cranny of our planet. This invaluable data helps professionals and hobbyists to better understand our planet and make data-driven decisions. In OSINT, Access to such data can help you locate an image or video, in some cases narrowed down to a time period. This ability to lock down an event to a specific time frame is colloquially referred to as chronolocation. Imagine that you're looking at a photo of something happening in a small village in the middle of nowhere. The media claims that the event happened on X day, but satellite imagery can tell you otherwise. By analyzing what's happening on the background of the image or video and comparing it with satellite images of the area, you may be able to narrow down the event to a very small time frame. This sometimes can be enough to fight disinformation and propaganda. I've been playing around with Sentinel Hub EO browser for a while now. This website compiles a complete archive of Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3, Sentinel-5P, ESA's archive of Landsat 5, 7 and 8, global coverage of Landsat 8, Envisat, Marys, Modis, Proba 5 and Gibbs products in one place. It has an extensive amount of data available for free and it's very easy to use. So how does it work? First thing we need to do is decide what we want to investigate. I chose to focus on wildlife fires as it's something that's easily visible from satellite images and also fairly straightforward to compare with imagery from earlier dates. So then I had to find out where on our planet we currently have wildfires. For that, I used the website risk map with only the fire option selected. I selected the earliest date of the time frame shown below, so you can see there the date, in order to find fires that have been active for a while. I also chose the latest date to be of a few days ago, so I could make sure there was enough time for the satellites to gather and put images available on the Sentinel Hub website. So we have here, my time frame was the 9th February 2022 and the 20th of February 2022, which is more or less around the time that I wrote this blog entry. I was drawn to Argentina, where the area of Corrientes seemed to have been facing wildfires for a few weeks. So wildfires rage in northern Argentina. Moving around the area using the Sentinel Hub EO browser, I managed to find a location that was likely quite affected by the wildfires. You can also get there by inputting the following coordinates at the top right of the screen. So this is the coordinates and you put them there. This is a Sentinel EO browser website. I have decided to stick with the Sentinel-2 satellite images. Here you go, that one. As it's also used for monitoring burnt areas, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So you can see common usage, land cover maps, land change detection maps, vegetarian monitoring, monitoring of burnt areas. There we go. Once we click search, we have to select which data set we want to use. I tend to just pick one with very small cloud coverage to allow better visibility. The Sentinel-2 L2A only has a 6.9% cloud coverage, there you go, you can see it there, and its last image was gathered yesterday on the 22nd of February 2022, so it's perfect. So you can see the date here. Now that we can see the satellite image of the location, the wildfire destruction does seem substantial. We can even spot a few spots still aflame circled in red below. So you can see all of this is burned, all of it, while well, a few of them are still burning. In order to check out a different time, we navigate to Date, here you go, Date, that section at the top, and select one from the list of available snapshots. So you can see which ones are the available ones, and this is the one I selected. It's also quite useful to limit the amount of cloud coverage to make sure that the area we want to inspect is actually visible. So you can see, for example, a satellite image from the 8th of January 2022 below and my 
cloud coverage was set to at most 15%. We can even play a bit more with time lapses and create a little animation. For that, you'll need to register for a free user account. Then simply select the Create Time Lapse Animation icon on the right and center the area you want to view. Press the blue button in the middle to start creating it. I have selected to view one photograph per day, so there you go, one per day, limiting to images with a maximum cloud coverage of 25%, you have here, with the start point on the 29th December 2021, there, and the most recent one from the 22nd February 2022, there. We can then select or deselect any photo that is or not useful for our animation from this. I've picked seven different images from that time frame and then simply save the animation by clicking the download button there at the corner. You can watch the final result below. And here it is, an animation. We can infer that the fire reached the outskirts of the nearby village between the 2nd and the 7th of February 2022. So you can see there's a bit of fire starting, got burned, then starts again, and suddenly just everything gets burned. And this is the nearby village. This type of data can be very helpful if we're looking at corroborating or disproving information given by the media or a questionable news outlet. I hope this mini tutorial was helpful to anyone wanting to learn more about analyzing and comparing satellite data. Thank you for listening. And now, before you go, I'm going to show you how I actually did that. So you select there a coordinates that I have shown you and we're already on the right place. So if you zoom out, you can see this, the Corrientes area. And if you just zoom, even if you're not zooming in the correct place, once you do it, it'll just... Oh God, I zoomed too much, didn't I? <laughs> I did. Okay, back again. Here we go. So this is the village nearby, the wildfires that happen more or less around here. We have selected by default the Sentinel-2 and we click search. And now suddenly it'll tell you all the cloud coverage, what date it was um, collected and so on. So we'll just pick something like, oh, 0%, brilliant, 0%. That is amazing. And there you go. This shows me, let me just zoom out a bit. It shows me the area of Loreto and nearby where the fires happened in January. But then the thing is that this is not January now, is it? This is giving me the date of 29th November 2022 because this video was recorded much later. So let's move this to January 2022. And let me just put this cloud coverage to something like 15%. Yes, I like that. So it tells me there's a few options. So let me click the eighth because this is similar to what we had. So we have here the 8th of January 2022. But now let's see if we can check out the time lapse. Remember, it was here time lapse animation. And let me just center, like, yeah, that's that's a decent area. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see better. So now that we've chose the area we want a time lapse, we can click the play button and we get extra options. So we'll select one per day, as I had said before, and I want to start December 2021. And let me select the 29th, like I had on the blog. And the latest date, I want to put it on the 22nd February. So that one there. Brilliant. Cloud coverage, definitely not 100. Let's go with 25 or something like that. Now that we have the cloud coverage, we can select or deselect any from the list. So we look at it and think, yeah, that's that's all we want. So we can then check here the time lapse before downloading, see if we like it. So look at that. There's a little fire starting there. More fires more, way too many fires, and this is all burned. You can see, and this is still ongoing fires. So it's not as centered as the one I had before, but this is the same area. And then you can just download it down here, and that is it. That is how you can use Sentinel Hub to track down changes in landscapes such as wildfires. Thank you again for listening. Sophia.